In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to run F-Tests. Um, I will be doing this in R, but that's really besides the point. I'm just trying to show you how to do a proper hypothesis test after you run a regression model. Okay, so I've imported a house price data set. So just to show you what it looks like, I don't know if you can see, but it's got sale price against lot size, against bathrooms, uh, bedrooms, number of stories, and so on. So it's got a number of features, but what I'm trying to do is predict sale price. And by the way, this is not um, any any real data set, it's just a hypothetical data set, so don't try to interpret um, it, it the way that you would today. Um, anyway, just just as a start, starting thing, I'm just going to plot it out. So plot the, how, the, the lot size against the sale price, okay? Um, and again, j just if you really want to know the R commands, main means the title, X lab means X label, right? So the X, X axis label, so in this case it's lot size, the Y label will be price. This PCH thing is just coloring in the dots so so that I will get black, real dark black dots. And this AB line will give will draw a line uh, in that plot and the, the line happens to be a linear regression model. Okay, so LM stands for a linear regression model. Okay, so that's the still um, not what we're after. So let's let's just quickly run a regression model. And to run a regression model in R, you have to say LM. And then you have to say, in this case, I'm doing sale price against lot size. So this it's really the lot, the tilde over here that says how to do a, um, it's against in, in R. Okay, so, and the data set that I'm, or rather the table that I'm pulling this sale price feature is from H price. Okay. Okay, so let's just quickly run this bit. Again, there's not a tutorial in R, so that's why I'm really rushing through this. Okay, so now I get the the estimates of, of what I'm after. So the the coefficients of of um, the sale price is three point four and six point five nine. So what I what I mean by that is if I was to write out my model, if I was to write out my model, it's going to say sale price. So I'll just go with, uh, s price is equal to. Uh, so that's e means ten to the power of. So in this case, it'll be thirty four. 34,140 uh, was roughly around that area, okay, plus 6.59, so that's e to the zero means uh, just multiplied by one, um, so 6.599 times the lot size, okay, so th this, is, this is my model, so sale price is equal to 34,000 plus 6.59 of a lot size. If I was to interpret this, I would say uh, if lot size increases by one square meter, on average, the sale price would increase by, by $6.599. Uh, okay, so the units are important, and this is only on average. And I would usually say keeping all other variables constant, but there are no other variables in this particular model. Okay, let me, let me just run this model against every single every every other feature that I have okay so bed, number of beds oops, sorry what happened there but uh, so so against the number of beds the number of um, the lot size the driveway if, if there is a driveway or not um, and so on so driveway over here is a dummy variable okay so it's a yes or no thing so it can only take on the the value one or zero okay so that's what we call dummy variables in regression model anyway so here, here we have um, our model. So if I was to write down this model, it's going to say, uh, it's it's going to be saying, so this, this is a bit of a longer one, so I'm only going to write some of it. So sale price is equal to negative 4038 uh, plus 3.5 times lot size. So just notice now this time the, the coefficient has changed as you would expect. Um, plus 1,832 times the number of bedrooms plus 14,335 uh, times the number of bathrooms and so on. Okay, so I'm not going to write the rest of it. But that's that's really the uh, that's, that's the uh, thing that we're after. So, okay. Now, what I really want to focus on is, is this model significant? So, is this model giving us any valuable uh, predictions okay 
And to do that, we need to do this in call ftest. So in this case, there are 11 variables. So if I, if I say all these things over here are supposed to be, let's call them betas, okay? So that's beta zero for the intercept, beta one, and so on. What I'm really saying is, are these betas supposed to, are these coefficients significantly different to zero? So are they supposed to be zero, which means there won't be a model? Okay, so if I, if I get rid of this number, this number, this number, so make them zero, I won't have beds in their predicting sale price, I won't have bots predicting sale price, and so on. Okay, so for F test, the, the null hypothesis is going to say, is beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to, in this case, beta 11? So is beta 11 equal to 0? Okay, so just notice over here that I didn't actually include beta 0. Okay, so you never try and test beta 0. Okay, so this one is a no-no. I'll tell you the reason why. Now, H1 is going to be saying at least, at least 1 beta i is not equal to 0. So notice over here, it's actually simultaneously equal to 0. Right? So it's, I, I, want, I really want to stress that this is simultaneously. I think I spelled that correctly. I hope I did. Um, so simultaneously equal to 0, because then and only then will I have no model. OK, so the question is asking, will I have a model? A, a significant model okay so if i get rid of all the variables in there then it will ha it, it's not going to be predicted by anything the only thing that it, it will be predicted by is by its average so this this um, this number over here will simply become the average of the sale price okay um, so effectively you will you will say sale price is equal to average sale price plus some sort of error if, if, if there is no model okay because you can always describe a set of numbers by its average and that's why okay now the statistic um, the statistic in this case is the f stat which is mean squared regression divided by mean squared error now in R unfortunately it doesn't give you these values but in an exam they might they might give you what the MSR value is MSE values and you'd have to calculate this by, by yourself Okay, the distribution. Now, this this is a fairly important important one that people um, sometimes miss out on. So the distribution. So in this case, uh, it's, it is a F statistic. A F sorry, F distribution, as it say. Width. Now, the degrees of freedom is what people forget. So in this case, um, there are eleven variables, right? So it's going. The first degrees of freedom is going to be eleven. So there are two sets of degrees of freedom. The second one. The way that you calculate it is to go the number of observations minus the number of variables minus one. So in this particular one, I had uh, let me see, I had uh, so I pulled in 546. Okay, so this will obviously depend on your data set. So it'll be 546 minus 11 minus one. Okay, so 546 minus 12, and R happens to give it out to you. Okay, so in, in at the at the very bottom when you do summary. Of your model, it gives it out to you. So in this case, it's it's uh, 534. Okay, all right. So the distribution we have F distribution. Now your decision rule. There's two ways of doing this. Okay, so the first way. The first way. Let me highlight it. It's it's going to be the easy one. Is if you have the p value. So if p value is less than, let's say 0 0.01. So it's my significant level is one percent. Reject at zero. Okay, so in my conclusion, uh, so I'll put my conclusion down here. So looking at this thing, my p value is 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 16. So I'd say uh, since p value equals 2.2 uh, .2 times 10 to the negative 16 is less than, uh, oh, I can't squeeze that in, it's less than 0 0.01. Uh, you reject reject H0. Okay, so that's really the easy method. As soon as they give you the p-value, you can find it out straight away. Now, sometimes in an exam, they might not give you a p-value. The alternative method is to look at critical value. So the other one is if F observed, my observed value is greater than 
the critical value. Now to calculate the critical value, you, you either have to look up a table or uh, do some sort of function. So in, in R, if you were to do this, is the quantile function. It's a, the quantile function of F, so that's what it's saying. So in, in R, it gives you the lower tail. So I'm going to say 0 0.99, so that the upper tail is 0 0.01. The dig and then you put in the degrees of freedom. So LM and 34, 2.28. Okay, so if you notice over here, the, the observed value is 99.97, so it's actually quite high. Um, so it, it's cons so okay, let me do this. So it's, if observed 2.28, reject is zero. Now you don't have to do both methods, okay? You choose one or the other. Reject is zero, but again, since, since, um, 99 is greater than 2.28 reject okay so there you go that's how you do a f statistic now before we finish off i'm just going to tell you that you can only do um, a one tail test in f, f statistics mainly because f statistics are always positive so if i was to draw the distribution it looks a bit like that okay so what we're after is, we're checking, is, is my observed value, is my observed value greater than this rejection region, well, in this rejection region. So in this case it was, the so 99 was somewhere up, way up there. All right, so this is a rejection region. And therefore we reject our null hypothesis. And if you're tr still trying to get your head around this p, p, p value, one way to think about it is to say, under under h zero, okay. So under h zero, which is saying all betas are equal to zero, the chance of me observing ninety nine point uh, ninety nine point something for my f statistic was two point two times ten to negative sixteen, or rather, it was extremely small. The chance of me observing a value ninety nine or greater is extremely small under the null hypothesis. So it's more probable that I can reject h zero. And agree with H1. Now H1 is saying at least one of them is equal to zero. So it, it's possible. It's possible that. Um, so if I look at my if I look at my variables, that I should probably get rid of um, bathrooms or driveway. But I don't know which one. Um, so it, it, sorry, it's possible that only one of them is is significant. So this value is significant. Everything else is supposed to be zero. Okay. Um, so in a, in my next video, I'm going to be doing t tests, which will tell you which one to get rid of and which one not to okay um so that's it for f test uh, thanks for and thanks for watching